Hey Pathfinders, hope y'all are having a great weekend. If you don't know me, my name is JP. Uh, I'm a college intern at the church this summer, so I get to work with Jackson and help out with Pathfinders. And if I don't know you yet, I really hope I, uh, I'll get to meet you and I'll get to know you more. Hopefully we'll get to resume in-person meetings sooner rather than later. Uh, and regardless of that, though, there is still um, Wednesday night small groups uh, Pathfinder meetings. Uh, so for fifth and sixth graders, meetings start at six o'clock and for seventh and eighth graders, the meetings start at five thirty. So if you haven't, uh, been going to those meetings, you should definitely show up next week. It'll be a lot of fun and we'll get to talk about the Bible, which is always great and which is something that we'll be doing right now. So, uh, yeah. And today, we will be talking about Acts 15. Uh, Last week in Jackson taught over Acts 13 and 14. And if you missed any of the previous weeks of Sunday School Lessons, I encourage you to to watch them. Um, You can find them on the YouTube channel. Because they have a lot of just great lessons that we can apply to our everyday lives. And, and, I mean, with Acts, we'll get to see how, um, go chapter by chapter and see how everything comes together. Uh, but yeah, let's get into Acts 15. Uh, I'm going to offer a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, that we can uh, meet virtually and talk about you. Uh, pray that we can learn more about you and grow closer to you and realize the love you have for us more. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yeah, um... Last week, Jackson was talking about how the early church at this point was uh, figuring out what what all God had done um, through Jesus. And he pointed out that there were questions as to if Christianity was just for Jews or if it was also for people who aren't Jews. And yeah, so starting out, most Christians were Jewish. I mean... When Jesus is, was having his ministry and sharing his message, he was sharing it to Israel, which was mostly Jewish. But now the gospel is going out farther and being heard by more people, and uh, the disciples are sharing the message with 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 so many more. And, uh, and yeah, like we have. Uh, the story of Cornelius that we talked a few weeks ago, um, where Cornelius and his household is converted to Christianity. And just last week we had Paul and Barnabas' uh, first missionary journey, uh, where they share where they share the word of God with many others, and it's being heard and believed by Gentiles, not only by Jews. So some Christian Jews didn't know how to feel about Gentiles joining the Christian family. They thought that Gentiles needed to become Jewish to become Christian and to be saved. But there were other Christians, many other Christians, who disagreed, Paul and Barnabas Barnabas being some of them. So the disagreement builds up uh, in chapter 15, where we read about the church leaders having a meeting called the Council of council of jerusalem to figure out who was right so if you haven't read chapter 15 yet i encourage you to pause the video uh, pull out your bible and uh and read it it's it's really interesting and i think it'll help you just understand what i'm talking about a little bit more so there are some jewish christians who believed that gentiles could only be saved if they became jewish too like i was like i was saying um and that would mean that they needed to be circumcised, um, and they would need to follow the, the whole law of Moses, um, the whole Old Testament Jewish law. And this is stuff like keeping the Sabbath, um, eating kosher food, and a lot of other just rituals that were aimed at keeping um, the Jewish people pure. Paul and Barnabas disagree with this and take it to the church leaders to find the truth. And what the church leaders decide is is really groundbreaking because 
makes it clear that Christianity isn't just this a minor revision from Judea of Judaism, uh, but it's actually a big shift in how God is now interacting with the world. We're no longer focused on just the Jewish people, but all people on earth. And a relationship with him is available to all people on earth. So, But um, what I want us to take away from this chapter comes from Peter in verses 7 and 11. So Peter's talking to the whole council and uh, saying what he thinks about the whole matter. Um, and he says, Brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you some time ago to preach to the Gentiles so that they could hear the good news and believe. God knows people's hearts, and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did for did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he cleansed their hearts through faith. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? We believe that we are all saved the same way, by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, so there's a lot in this in these verses, but two things I want to pick out. One, he talks about um, how our hearts are cleansed. And what he gets at is that the Christian's heart is cleansed by faith in Jesus, not by anything else. So purity is no longer received through obedience to the Jewish law, but by faith in Jesus um, and his, his purity is how we receive purity, how we, how we are cleansed. And um, secondly, salvation is a free gift of grace to those who believe in Jesus Christ. It's not something we earn, that we get by, uh, by obeying laws, but it is this gift that we receive by faith in Jesus. So, um, yeah, the council uh, decides that Gentiles do not need to become Jewish to be saved. And yeah, that was 2,000 years ago uh, about. So what does that mean for us today as, as Christians? Well, for one, we wouldn't be Christians today if Gentiles weren't Christian. Um, I don't think there may be someone with Jewish uh, with a Jewish background. I don't know, but for the most part, I think a lot of us uh, are descendants of Gentiles. So there's one thing, but but more so, um, or just as important, um, this chapter reminds us that we don't earn our salvation. We aren't saved by what we do and what we don't do, but we are saved. By, we are saved as a free gift by having faith in Jesus. And with this faith, we are called to follow Jesus and trusting in him and being obedient to his teachings. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing. So back to the, the, the chapter. Um, after they make their decision, the council sends out a letter to Gentile believers that says they do not need to become Jews to be saved. Um, in verse 31, it says, um, when, the, when the Gentiles are reading it, the, the verse says, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is, uh, verse 31 says, and when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. So when the Gentiles hear this great news, they have so much joy and they find encouragement in it. And this is the other part that I think is important. Um, it, it This reminds us how great the gift is that Jesus offers us. Um, it gave uh, the Gentile believers joy and encouragement to know that they are saved only by their faith that Jesus Christ died for their sins and is risen. And it should give us that same joy and encouragement. They didn't have to become Jewish to receive this gift all they have to have is faith in Jesus and just as we all we need, have to have is faith in Jesus 
it's 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 the same for us that we are saved only by God's grace through the faith that we have in 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 Him. So regard so with this, uh, my question for you guys is: How do you respond to the gifts of salvation offered by Jesus? I mean, there, there's no greater act of love than what Jesus did on the cross, dying for our sins. But I think sometimes we forget how big of a deal that is. Um, so we need to ask ourselves, when we hear this, will we, will we respond with indifference, disinterest, and just coldness to the gift? Or, or will we respond like the Gentile believers did, uh, rejoicing when hearing this great great news and finding so much encouragement from it to to continue growing in faith will we respond with thankfulness and this desire to know god more and to love him more deeply if we do believe that this is good news which i think we do um it should definitely impact how we act and what we focus on and we should, we should strive to follow God uh, more and trusting Him in, in Him more and loving Him more. Uh, so yeah, that, that's just a few thoughts I had on the chapter. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope I get to see all of you soon. And if I don't know you, I hope I'll get to meet you and just get to know all of you more. Um, have a great rest of your day. Uh, Yeah, see ya.